everyone and welcome to this tutorial video for horizontal mattress stitch. Horizontal mattress stitch is used to sew two pieces of knitting together in a horizontal seam. Horizontal mattress stitch is very much like uh, duplicate stitching. It also has similarities with grafting. So if you have any experience with that, then you might find this to be very easy to learn. I am going to be joining some squares for my blanket. Here you can see the seams that I have already done. I have not uh, steamed or blocked these after seaming. So now you see a little bit of a... Um, cushioning effect. I'm not really sure how to describe it, but you see a little bit of a 3D effect. And on the back, you see this ridge, which is similar to when you do vertical mattress stitch. You always get this kind of seam, this ridge on the, on the wrong side. These blanket squares, uh, they are part of my pattern called the Colorwork Sampler Blanket. I will link the pattern below. And the pattern also includes a full layout if you don't really know how to um, put your squares together. I'm going to join these two together in this video. So I'm going to be joining these two squares, but you can use this same skill on any two pieces of stockinette knitting with the right side of the stockinette facing you. I'm going to take a length of yarn about two or three times the length of what we're about to join. I'm taking a needle. Um, if you have a variety of needles, take a blunt one rather than a sharp one. And we are going to be starting the first stitch on the bottom piece and then going to the top piece and after doing some seaming I found out that I like to weave the end in right at the start so I don't need to do that afterwards and I can make full use of this thread because I don't need to leave 15 centimeters before I start. So I've just woven it in already and now let's take a look. Obviously this is color work uh, but the very last knit row is just in one color so this it doesn't matter that this is color work and I am going to skip the very the column on the very edge because I'm going to be seaming this vertically as well and for that I will be using the second column so the first column will just not be used and so in that second column I want to come up in the middle of this stitch which is the top most stitch and I want to come up through the center of it see so you see the stitch that has kind of a V shape and I want to come up through the center like this. Now I'm going to take the top square and locate the very first stitch on the second column. So and you can also see that the second column or I mean that the first column is kind of messy, kind of distorted. That's also why we seam with the, uh, from the second stitch. And here, I'm not going to go up through the stitch. I'm going to go around it. So I have my stitch here. And I'm going to go around it, curling behind it. You can also see it as going underneath. So let's let's take a look at this this singular stitch right here that's easy to demonstrate with. So you have these two legs and you're going underneath both. That's what I'm doing. 
I'm not pulling it completely tight. And now I want to go back into that stitch and I'm going to come up through the stitch next to it. So I'm going to go in and then the next stitch I'm coming up through the center. And then in the top piece, I'm going behind the second stitch, the third stitch in this square, but the second stitch that we're using. And then on the bottom piece, we're going in that stitch, coming up through the center of the stitch next to it. And now you can kind of see that we are creating new knit stitches. So that's why it's kind of like duplicate stitch or grafting. And you can leave the seam as it is, but we are going to pull it tight so that it is invisible. Or it's not really invisible because you see that there is a seam but you don't see the color that I did that with. So with this one, I use this vibrant um, green, which you don't see at all here. Right, so I'm going to do this a couple more times. I'm going behind this stitch here. Dipping into the center of this one, coming up through the center of the one next to it. And repeat. Right, so I'm going to pull the seam and I am going to put, place my fingers on the edge here so that this end doesn't slide out. So I'm going to pinch that and I'm going to pull gently, gently but firmly. And when I get to this corner, I'm going to not, uh, I'm going to move my fingers from it so that it can cinch in and then you want to just pull the fabric so that it's not too tight and I haven't talked about this yet but the yarn I'm using is the same yarn that I used for this um, if you want it to be super strong you can use a cotton and then so if you've completely cinched it in it might be a little bit difficult to see where you are so the last stitch you can kind of pull it like that and then you see okay we've just gone through there so we need to finish this stitch by going in here and coming up here i'll just repeat this for the rest of this seam and then I'll show you how to end this seam, how to finish it. Just filming this again because I think it's so satisfying. Okay, I'm almost at the edge and we want to stop when we're at the second column from this side. So 
So right now I'm taking the second, uh, the stitch from the second column here. The first column is kind of, you know, the corner stitch is kind of, I don't know, <laughs> it's hidden in here. Um, and so now I'm going back into this stitch, which is the second corner from this square, but I'm not coming back up through the one next to it. I'm just going down and then pulling it tight. You can see that there are some loose bits here. This often happens with me uh, on the very last row. That's part of my tension, I guess. But it doesn't really matter because that's on the first column and afterwards I'm going to be seaming vertically with the second column. So you won't see any of that. Turning it to the wrong side. And here you can choose to either weave it into the seam if you want it, if you want um, the ends to stay invisible. But I, you see, I've woven in an end here before. But I usually just weave it in like this. I'm going to be sewing a backing to this blanket so it will cover up any ends. And there we have it. So because the seam is, um, it has more structure than the rest. So this, the seam is laying completely flat, whereas the rest of the square is curling up at the edges. So that's why it looks to be a little bit wider at the seam. But uh, any of that will disappear once you do the vertical seaming. And here is a look at the finished seam. I'm very, very pleased with it. And you can't see the green yarn that I mended it with or that I sewed it with. You can see it here. So yes, very pleased with this. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I was able to teach you something. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!